Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back. It is time once again to play some 8-bit Nintendo games and uh, use the power of science to get them on a list, as we have been doing for the last... This is, this is week 15. Installment 15 of this ongoing adventure. I want to thank everyone who has joined me for this adventure, uh, especially the members of the Gerstmann Advisory Panel, uh, who have been suggesting a handful of the games and kind of determining some of the order um, and all of that good stuff. If you are interested in that, you can go over to patreon.com slash Jeff Gerstmann and, uh, and, and get on board the Great Space Coaster. And by that, I mean you can get on the Discord and some other stuff, and it's, it's fun. We're having fun. Um... That sounded convincing. We're having, we're having fun. Um, no, it's, it's been, it, it is, it has been, a, it has been a great time getting to know some of you, getting to argue with some of you about the quality of Call of Duty and such. Um, and uh, anyway, we find ourselves here once again, looking at our list. It's up to 109 games. We go from Super Mario Brothers all the way down to Circus Caper. Which, uh, man, this is a really rotten bottom of the list. <laughs> this is some pretty... Uh, I have high hopes for some of the games on this week's list. I, I don't, you know, for at least being, uh, you know, the, the middle of the list type games, but... But uh, I'm always surprised. If you want to get a look at the list, someone set up a list site. Uh, I was going to, I needed to do some work to a Notion page before I could share it the same way I share the energy drink list. Uh, but you can find it at 8bitnintendo.science. That's the number eight. Don't, don't write out the word eight. Um, and, um, and you can get a look at the list. As well as I think there are links to the previous episodes where you can find uh, that that was the stuff I was eventually going to do. It was like I need to convert this list into a spreadsheet so that I can do this and have this link here and what you know, um, and so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, here we are. I'm, I'm gonna. I gotta get yunked. I I gotta get yunked before we get going. Uh, I was gonna drink this the other day and then uh, avoided it. I there's a there's a um an Asian store. Asian grocery store relatively close by. And, uh, I took a drive out that, that away earlier in the week. And I got some Aquarius. I'm so psyched to find a place that stocks Aquarius. Uh, they also had some Picari sweat and some CC lemon, which I, I, you know, like that's fantastic as well. But Aquarius was always the sports drink of choice. Uh, when I was, uh, going to Tokyo a lot and, uh, and they stock it. And so I, I was super fucking excited to get my hands on some Aquarius not the powder either like real proper bottled Aquarius yeah ton, all the flavors of Calpus it, it's yeah I'll, I'll be back for sure but as I was looking around this caught my eye a tiny can of sparkling yunker and I thought well I, I got to get yunked so I figured on this Friday morning here before we truly got going I would crack this it's not going to go on the list it has calories in it and I'm not even really sure that it's a proper energy drink, though it does say here. See, if I had autofocus, this would work, but then autofocus makes everything else shitty. It says, turn on the energy. And it's got uh, coenzyme, a little CoQ10. It's got some vitamin B6 and herbal supplement all up in this yunker. Uh, this It says supplement facts. This was sold over with the vitamins and stuff. This wasn't in some, this wasn't in the drink section. This wasn't in the section for like, hey, have a beverage. This was in the, yo man, you need some vitamins? You need to feel better? Get yunked. And so here we are. I'm finna get yunked. Right here, right now. They also had it in a, a jelly pouch, which, you know, that's, I, those, I'm, I'm used to drinking, uh, my weird vitamin things in weird jelly pouches when it comes to Japanese whatevers. It's got a very airy, light, kind of grapefruity kind of, uh, smell to it. 
Hmm. Let's get yeah, let's get yunked. This is not a drink you would drink for pleasure. But uh It's got guarana seed extract, some oriental ginseng root extract, some coffee bean extract. So it does have some sort of energy type things in it, but I, I you know, I'm, I, uh, I'm, I'm here to get yunked and I'm, and I'm not going to stop now. Oh, that's sparkling younger. <sighs> this would probably be better in a energy, you know, a, a pouch, a goo pouch. Well, Mm. I have purchased things in Japan that tasted a lot like this, so I guess I'm not entirely shocked. Ugh. All right. Well, I feel better. Let's chase that with, uh, I found a can of R Monster Rehab lemonade in the, in the old energy box over here. So let's uh, get a little bit of that in and then play some video games. Okay. Up first. I picked this one out. Um, I think, you know, there's a part of me that wants to kind of get through all of the original black box games um, on a somewhat regular basis, and so I chose another one of those. Um, I I am uh, I'm not sure how I'm not sure how this one's gonna do. I'm not sure how I'm gonna feel about this one. Uh, you know, this is a game that I definitely greatly valued as a youth. It's Excite Bike. Or as I called it as a child, Excite a Bike. Because, you know, it's a weird, it's a weird name. It's making a bunch of, I, I don't know if that you hear that, but I hear it in my headphones. Making a weird low hiss. Um, wait, I didn't select game A or B. What? I mean, we're going to pick A. But that was still weird. So, uh, in game A here, we race alone. Sort of a, a time attack mode, I suppose. And, um... If you're not familiar, Excite Bike uh, is a... It uses button A for regular speed and button B for higher speeds. But when we, uh, when we use... Button B, the temperature rises, and we do not want to overheat. Those arrows on the track are coolants that will cool your temperature down. And so it's a mix of making sure that you're feathering the B button or, or not, you know, not overheating by a mix of, you know, backing off on the button. 
and uh, hitting those uh, hitting hitting those coolant strips. These big super jumps send you real far. If you wreck, you can mash the buttons to get on the bike a little faster. And, uh, you know, you see I'm, I'm controlling in the air here the, the pitch of the bike so that I'm landing flat and not bouncing a bunch. Oops, we overheated. Missed that coolant. I just, I'm a top lane guy in this game. I always have been. And I'm sure that there are better times to be had if you uh, are better at the game. <laughs> and it's very straightforward. Though we do start getting some more complicated track pieces like this. We went over that jump and fucked it all up. Uh, this was one of the, you know, as far as early 8-bit Nintendo games, this this was considered, uh, you know, uh, this was always considered to be um... a great game. If we do wheelies over these things, we won't crash. Oh. But I, you know, I... This is, it's, it's, uh, you know, we'll, we'll play game B and, oh, we bounced over the stupid cooling thing, so we, we missed it. It's no good. Oh, did that again. Um, but it, it's 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 incredibly straightforward. Maybe perhaps to a fault, but uh, you know that's the era, right? Third place, man! Come on, third place. And I think there are five tracks in all, if I remember right. Is it five or is it eight? Look at this thing. Ugh.
Okay, all right. But at the same time, you know, I, when, when stuff like Excite Truck came out, I feel like that game didn't capture any of the magic of this game. Or, uh, well, like, Excite Bike 64 or whatever. That, that, those were the other ones, right? It was Excite Bike 64. There was, like, a behind-the-back, like, kind of generic bike game and then uh and then an excite truck and then what did excite truck have the bugs what what am i remembering here uh, anyway excite bike world rally is that the uh. excite bots right I like the little guys on the side of the track. They're, they turn around like this guy with his little thumbs up. The thumb chases you. Oh, no. We're going to roll forever. That's the worst place to wreck because, you know, you, you roll over the entire obstacle. Didn't even get third that time. So that's your game A. We go over here to selection B here. Uh, you see that we can... And so if your back tire hits their front tire, they wreck. I think is how that works. Oh. And so it just puts obstacles on the track. It's not really a race, per se. It doesn't really change the stakes uh, dramatically. It just uh, gives you some more obstacles to contend with. Mm. It's like, this is really satisfying to like hit those just right so that you hit the downside of them and, and go the right way. Like, like lining things up the way that it's meant to be. 
with uh, the, the spacing and, and all that sort of like doing that sucks <laughs> but when you when you hit that just right oh I missed that that sucks But you end up in situations like that where you're just like, oh, I, you know, was coming in hot in the air, didn't really have a lot of control there at that point, and I wrecked into the back of a guy. Like, it's, that's, that's not, that's not super fun. But, you know, the, the good little jingles and um, the sound effects, I think, are grating. Like, now that I'm sitting here thinking about it and, you know, uh, uh, again, applying the science, I never would have had a bad word to say about a game like Excite Bike, but now that we're here, I, you know... Oh. right number one baby um yeah it's it's um nothing wrong with it per se um oh and you can't hit you cannot hit the guys walking on the track much to my chagrin did that, did that stop me from hitting them hmm. sometimes Fuck off with that. Come on. Yeah, uh, I'd say the sound effects are maybe a little grating here and now. Uh, and that's, that's kind of it, except for this mode, which lets you make your own track. This was another one of those games that came with save and load options that uh, here in the United States did not do anything. Nothing to load. No battery backup. No, no options there. Um... I think this eventually errors out. <laughs> I forget. Really crazy, you know, like the manual would say, hey, you're gonna see some stuff in here um, with saving and loading, but it doesn't do anything. Get your, yes, get your Famicom data recorder out and, uh, And so we have uh, different Boy, the controls on this are weirdly unresponsive. I'm a big H guy. 
Uh, just filling it full of these big super jumps and just bouncing all the time. R is also good, because this is this big thing, and then S is this big thing. And so let's lay that down, and then we'll uh, we'll go forward a little bit here and put a put an H, and then we'll go up here and what are the, what are the coolers? M. Okay. Let's do two laps of that. And we'll play it on mode A. It's a new record. Is this the first game to ship, uh, first level editor to ship at a game? No. No, Load Runner would have been before this. Um... Load Runner would have been before this. But what else? I'm sure that there's others that I'm, uh, but you know, and then we can go back in and edit it and all that stuff too. It's, you know, it's, it's a relatively straightforward editor. It's, it's about as. You could you could make all of the in the the real games tracks in it, I'm sure. And uh but yeah, I, I used to just make, you know, as as a kid, I would just make hell of super jumps. And that's about it. <laughs> Let's save that. Let's save that one. Yeah, there we go. Very confusing to have, like, it was this and Mock Rider, and I think there was one other game uh, early era. Might have been just those two, though. Um, that had these low... Oh, Wrecking Crew. I think Wrecking, Wrecking Crew? Yeah, I think Wrecking Crew had it. Um, there it goes. We saved it. <laughs> Perfect. Um that had these save and load options that they had to just put in the manual. Like, Hey, it's, it's funny to me that they didn't, you know, they were so, it says a lot about the, um, North American launch of the NES that they just took the Japanese versions of these games that were already in English and just put them out here untouched. They were like, yeah, you know, we could press up new carts and stuff, but these were probably the games that also, if you crack a lot of them open, they were literally the Japanese cartridges with a pin adapter put in, you know, like people get into like holding up the cartridges and, and, and seeing how heavy they are. Like if it's heavy, that means it has a pin converter in it. And that's just, that means this is an early run Japanese version of the game, as opposed to a freshly pressed new board. Um... And so, yeah, you know, the Japanese version's already in English, so they, they, they could just put it out. Um, but I bet it would have, you know, yeah, if, if they had had to, especially in those early days, if they had had to go in and edit these options out and, and press up new carts and everything, I bet their costs would have gone up quite a lot. 
And in those early days, they were probably doing everything they could to keep those costs down. And so that's why you end up with these games coming over completely untouched and um, in, in ways that are often weird, right? Because, you know, hey, they're just the Japanese versions of the game. Um, that's Excite Bike. I have a, so yeah, I guess I get, I have a fondness for Excite Bike, sure, but if we're really thinking about the quality of Excite Bike, I, you know, it's a game of its era, um, for sure. It was a game that I really did enjoy as a kid, but I, I don't think it's aged especially well. I think it's just, um, it's very thin. Um, you know, I, what would make it better? I, more, more tracks, better AI, proper multiplayer, I suppose, you know, th those are all things that maybe would, would help more track variety, I guess. Um, but I, I think, I think it lacks the, the depth of even a wrecking crew. Um, and so I think we're, we're really talking about somewhere in this zone. Um, Excite Bike is, uh, is, is, is better than Kid Nikki. Is, is Excite Bike better than Load Runner? Yes. Cause that's a funky port of Load Runner. Excite Bike's better than Lunar Pool. It's better than Ice Hockey. It's, it's, it's above Kid Nikki Radical Ninja. These arcade ports are fine, but Excite Bike is more interesting. Um, and so I think what we're going to find here. is that Excite Bike, it's no schoon. But it's better than the NES port of Galaga. Demons of Death. Uh, yeah, that's, you know, that Excite Bike would, I think if you asked me to rattle off a list of great Nintendo games before we started down this path and I really started thinking about it, um... Excite Bike would have been a name I would have at least mentioned. I'm like, oh yeah, Excite Bike, that's a great game, you know. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it's just not a, not a game that's aged super well. Next up, we've got a game uh, that was suggested to us by Gold, and I have never heard of this. <laughs> It's Galaxy 5000 racing in the 51st century from Activision 1990. Yeah, a Microsoft published game on a Nintendo platform, not since Minecraft. Have we seen one of these? This, this track, this music feels like it is about to spin apart at any moment, tempo-wise. I, yeah, I, I have no idea. I've never seen... I don't think I've ever seen this game before. Well, we want alpha controls, of course. Do we want damage or money? This music is killing me. Oh. I feel like I've seen... Oh, okay, we have to push it in the direction we want to go in. This does look vaguely familiar. 
but I, I'm not sure that I've ever played this. The lack of, I mean, hey, it's space, right? But the lack of any kind of, like, engine noise or anything like that kind of... And I can jump. My spaceship can do two things, shoot and jump. Games that made these choices of like minimal audio because we've got music. Was never, it was never great. Especially when the music sounds like this. Like the music just sounds broken. Like I, I, I want. Like you wonder if like oh is the emulator timing off or something and it's, but. Your tomahawk is damaged. Well, we can't afford a crusher, so it looks like I push a direction on the D-pad. Oh, I see. That's a really weird. Like I can. I can go left and right on the D-pad to decide how much damage I want to undo. Oh, the the muse the. Uh, is this the same track but with obstacles on it? Well, I guess in closer races, we get a few more sound effects than we did uh, last race, but... Are those little spiky things power-ups, or are they mines? We'll never know. Um, so, yeah, there's no gas and brake. It's just shoot and jump, and I push in the direction I want to go to go. Which is, you know, it feels okay. Like, the animation on the ship makes it seem like it has a, a more turning radius, but, like... Without, I don't, it just, if it had an engine noise thing or something, like if there was just something else going on here, audio-wise, I think it would help sell uh, all of it. Okay, looks like I got zero points for getting spiky things, so the spiky things must be pickups. Right? That was a the booster thing, huh? The sound effects are like the like all the speech and stuff puts it kind of on par with Three Stooges. <laughs> In terms of just like, here's some, uh, here's some voice samples kind of out of nowhere. Like, I expect to, like, crash into another ship and it goes, ah, oh, wise guy, see? This music is so fucking bad. 
Like, are you hearing this? This is not just me, right? This, this is... track is like a little uh, deep, deep. yeah it's no off-world interceptor that's for sure i mean i guess like if i need a hundred thousand to buy a crusher and I'm only getting this much damage per race, then I should probably not fix it. So that I can afford a crusher maybe next race. Uh, also, the whoever had the idea of racing you on the same track four times in a row, but with slightly different obstacles, is... Uh, Galaxy 5000 brained for sure. But like in terms of the movement and and the the concepts here of of the race it's not it's not the worst, you know, you point in the direction you want to go in and that works pretty well and, uh, you know, you can jump and so this idea of jumping over obstacles but also like jump, you know, riskily jumping over turns or, you know, jumping over space as like a means of shortcut is, is interesting. Oh no. But the, the idea that we're on the same track over and over again. The planet of Mercury can only afford one racetrack. You understand. Uh, and yeah, when you boost and having you kind of bush, butt up against the edge of the screen. Cool, how do I buy the crusher? How do I do that? It's not start. It's not select. It's not down. It's not B. Okay, there we go. Bolo bombs. Standard weapon, fireballs. Special weapon, Bolo Bombs. The Bolo Bombs, yeah, they come with that uh, Honey Maple Ranch uh, that they're doing, uh, you know, for Christmas and... I never thought I'd say this, but hey, you know, can we get Mercury back?
f yeah, uh, El Generico here saying that, yeah, this is extremely rock and roll racing. And like, yeah, but like, that's a really nasty thing to say about rock and roll racing. One of the greatest games of all time. Galaxy 5000 is not that. Uh, I can't move. I can't move. I guess I was stuck on a wall. I like the idea of, of the way these shortcuts kind of work, of like, yo man, just fucking jump. Um, but the, I don't know, it kind of feels like the handling is not quite up to, up to snuff, and you know, you, you don't see enough of the track in a lot of cases, and, and some of that stuff just, uh, Some of this stuff just feels rougher than it probably should. Also, like, the amount of damage you take per track, you know, and, and I'm sure this ramps up, right? But it feels um, relatively inconsequential. Like, it doesn't feel like I'm going to blow up any of these guys. Oh, God. Well, yeah, maybe the landmines will... Uh, help escalate things a little bit. Also, I, I feel like for this being the first track with, you know, the really, you know, requiring you to jump those edges to really have any success at all, like, I think the AI kind of ramps up a little fast. Like, they, they know the tracks way better than you do right out of the gate, and, and they just fuck you over. Um, which is not super fun. I just, I can see a guy plinking this out on a keyboard and fucking just going, like he thinks he's just fucking ripping. And you know what? He is. But it's like just off time enough that it's like, uh, can we quantize that? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, uh, oh shit, I forgot to, I forgot to do that. Okay, so I took a whole bunch of damage that, that round, so... So I guess as we get, uh, you know, more races in here, we do end up in a situation where... I was wondering what would happen if we fell into space, and now we know. Oops. Oh, did I get my bolo bombs? Oh, 
Yeah, I don't know. This... There's like, a, there's slightly something happening here, but I don't... It's so janky. It's so fucking janky. And now we don't even have enough money to fully heal the ship, so, you know, hey. Oh, yeah, I guess we do. We're never gonna earn a, another ship at this rate. game would probably benefit from a mini map or something here too as the as the courses get more complicated it's uh not very easy to see what the fuck I'm supposed to be doing Yikes! I was doing really well there for a minute. But you know, hey, if you rented this, you could do this. You could do this for two or three days. And then, um, never think about it ever again. And then just layering a bunch of more obstacles on this. I, I'm, I wonder where this game was made. I'm, I'm getting British vibes off this. You know, we know Activision published it, but, uh... Oh, that's space. Hit him with the bolo bombs. Give him the rough stuff. Yikes. Yeah, maybe I'll blow up. It's weird that it, like, as time almost expires, it gets fuzzy. You're losing signal. That's kind of a neat idea. Looks to have been made in the U.S.? Okay. Crazy. Not that crazy. Avalanche folks worked on this, huh? Yeah, you know, you can see that the the Disney Infinity uh, driving stuff, you know, all came pretty directly from this, so. That's 
funny. Oh! Activision on the NES is an interesting phenomenon, right? Because they, they, they were... Activision was in a bad place in the 90s. This is, you know, not that far... This is probably around the the time that they changed from Mediagenic back to Activision or whatever. And, you know, there was just a weird... Or I guess 1990 would have been... Anyway. Activision hit a, some real rough patches there in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, and they, they had these stabs at making games for this platform that never felt real or rather they always felt like bad games that you're like i why did how did this happen uh why does this game exist or whatever um so, you know activision was always at, the, at that time you know after the atari stuff kind of went out of vogue activision was really thought of as like a pc maker you know a pc publisher and you know, return to Zork and, and whatever happening in the 90s as well. Later in the 90s, I guess, but... Um... But as a result, like, the Activision brand felt like... Fake, I guess? It was like, when, it, when you saw it on a game for the for Nintendo platforms, it was always just like, I'm weird, why? why? That can't be right. Uh, and they were always these janky games that were... That, that felt very out of step with other games on the platform. Oh, God. Having boosts that deliberately knock you off the track is, uh... I suppose a choice. What the f- uh, uh, that, I, hmm. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's pretty fucked up. Gosh. But like, yeah, the idea that like Ghostbusters was coming out on this platform, for example, as an as an Activision. And I felt that way about Activision probably until the PlayStation 1. Um That seemed like where Activision kind of got it back on console. And uh, you know, cuz like there was Pitfall, like all the Pitfall games that were coming out for Sega CD and other platforms of the era and stuff, like that stuff was really funky. Let's see what beta controls are like. Okay, so now we push up to go and instead of pushing the direction we want to go in, we push up to go and, and turn. This is... I actually think this is worse. But maybe that's just because I got used to the other. Oh, right. I'm still trying to drive the other way. And eh, these aren't bad. They're just different.
It's a good pause noise. It sounds like the computer in NARC between levels. Galaxy 5000. Not a good game. But I suppose I, like... It's, it's, there's something interesting about it, I guess I would say. Um, but yikes. Like, the combat feels very flat. The audio is really shitty. Um, I mean, I, we got, I, I gotta say here, scientifically speaking, it's, it's no solstice, the quest for the staff of Demos, Demnos. And, uh, I, you know, it's no Dino Wars destruction of Spondulus while we're at it. Uh, in terms of pure driving game satisfaction, I think Super Off-Road does a somewhat better job, but not, not that much better. Um, yeah, yeah, this is, uh, okay, what's the full... Racing in the 51st century. May we be so lucky. Um, there it is. It's your new number 77. It's no mule. But I'd rather play that than Tiger Heli. For sure. Um... V hold on the discord posted some review of it from some magazine. This is, this has to be some British magazine. It's got a 52% from this guy, not the greatest race game of all time and lacking a decent control method, but absorbing enough in its own peculiar, peculiar little way. That's not, yeah, that's, that's, I'd say that's pretty on point though saying not the greatest racing ga race game of all time is to is, is like a really ridiculous <laughs> it's like yeah, it's it's not the greatest race game of all time um big bang blitz says not to say I, I dislike britain i fully dislike british review mags though they are generally awful i you know yeah i'm i think i'm with you there um, there's something about this era of British magazines where they all, uh, think that they're very funny, very funny. And I, at the expense of light and just the, a lot of the lingo, the, a lot of the, um, British abbreviation type stuff for uh, that kind of came out of this era but carried forward certainly later into the 90s like Ninty for Nintendo I always thought that was just not, it's, it's bad uh, the idea of people referring to Resident Evil as Resi I think is stupid yeah when when people yes when people call Shigeru Miyamoto and I worked with someone who who did this on a somewhat regular basis and I I, I never did it but People that refer to Shigeru Miyamoto as Shiggy or Shigzy, usually Shiggy. I think that's gross. Um, I think that's, I, yeah, like I think that stuff is really crummy. Um, but I don't know if Shiggy was specifically a British thing, but, uh, because the, the person that I worked with that used it fairly often was was not British. But uh, this, uh, this review gets into the looks, sounds, gameplay, and lifespan. Lifespan's an interesting way of saying value, I suppose. Um, looks. Not particularly exciting, although the animation of the ships is smooth. Totally accurate. Sounds. Some sampled sounds, but mostly sounds like furp, burp, and kachirp. That's the worst. Because that's not like... You, you instead you should say barely has any sound other than the music which is fucked up <laughs> the timing of which is all fucked up 
Gameplay. Addictive but irritating, as you can only go so far without a thumb of iron. N no. That I disagree with. Lifespan. Unfortunately, your interest in playing this game lasts longer than your stamina. No. I could play more of it. I'm just not going to. Um... Oh, it's from Total Magazine, issue seven. Yeah, that's, yeah. Eh. Anyway, around these parts, it's number 77. <laughs> Here in the United States of A. It's goddamn. Yeah, the, 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 like, you know, the, it's. There, I, I never really, I think it's because the writing was often like the, they were trying to cram in, uh, you know, their kind of shitty turns of phrase or jokes or whatever at the expense of the writing about games and at the expense of information. Like, I think you can do both. Like you can have lighthearted, but informative writing about games. And this, that little review excerpt is actually, you know. It's not necessarily wrong. Like, I, I agree with the majority of it, but, um, but I think that, you know, you kind of have to, I don't know. Like, I, I, as a kid, I never found that style of writing, like, especially in, like, I was not the biggest game pro fan growing up. Um, or, uh, what was the other one? I mean, this was after, you know, this was kind of when I was getting going in things that I think this magazine maybe came right. Uh, game players, ultra game players, whatever, whatever. That was the, the one that they were, they were always trying to crack wise. And I don't think that like every time I read it, it was just like, these are not, these are not especially like, I don't, I don't think this, this stuff is, is especially good. Um, but I, I didn't read a ton of it, so I, I don't know. Like maybe game players, maybe other parts of it were good. But like I, you know, I give just um, yeah. I mean, you know, EGM generally was pretty good about what they were. You know, like pretty good at balancing that out. I don't think their writing was especially lighthearted, but at times it was. But um. Uh, but it's, it's why I gravitated towards video games and computer entertainment because they treated it more seriously. Um, they weren't, it didn't feel like they were talking down to you like, Hey, you're an idiot kid and games are dumb anyway. So we're just going to crack jokes and who cares? Cause games are so fucking stupid. Like some of the ma other magazines felt like it was like beneath them to be writing about games in the first place. And and that always really rubbed me the wrong way as someone who really liked video games. Like the, the idea that like, like just, just that style of writing. And so that, I've, I've said it multiple times, but that was something, I think there was a couple of us. I know, like, I remember having a conversation with Greg Kasavin at one point, like that, that he was also a, a VG and CE guy at one point. And, but like, that was the style we were going for at GameSpot was like, we don't want to write down to the audience. It doesn't mean, you know, that games are deathly serious. It doesn't mean, you know, that we can't have fun with it or whatever, but like, but like, come on, you know, um, we're here because we actually like video games, <laughs> that whole thing. Um, anyway, so that, that's how, we, that's how we approached it. Um. Anyway, let's move on. Um, Fandel or Fandel, Fandel, Fandel suggests the next game. And I don't know if this is, I, I am familiar with an arcade game based on this, but I don't think this is the same game. I have never seen this movie before. It's Willow. The other is the spirits of the earth are giving courage and hope. Uh-huh. 
We gotta bring peace to the world. Beautiful messengers give special power to protect the people's future. That special power was magic. It's really, it's really, oh my god. It's all on fire. This screen is nuts! <laughs> the people were living peacefully, protected by a great magic. Bav Morda, the messenger of the skies. Finn Raziel, the messenger of the earth. Ah, she got turned into a possum. I hate when that happens. All right, queen of the world, got it. Very serious music here. Password. The color palette here is really, uh, not really doing it for me. Oh, my dear Willow, if you get tired during your trip, come back here. You will be able to regain your strength. Before you begin your trip, you should talk to your neighbor, the High Aldwin. Be careful, he's very high. Ah, Willow! I'm high as hell! Here's some magic acorns for you! Oh, these magic acorns will turn anything to stone. about the music and the sound effects are really like discordant uh if i go the other way do i get a sword when do i get a st hmm. it feels like it's dangerous to go out there you know alone Village of Dew. I must trek to the Village of Dew and fetch the double XP. And then come back here and rage. I must go through the rugged forest just north of Nelwyn. Where's Nel? Is Nelwyn the wizard? Von Carr. Yeah, okay. I like the little thing in the quotes. You have the long sword that they wrote. Sword, long. Wow, this, uh, okay, so... So if I'm moving, it's a straight stab. If I'm not, it's a weird swipey swipe.
Okay, under no circumstances can we go off-roading. Gotta get the magic glasses and come back here and then you can see it's a ghost. Okay. Uh, okay. Is there anything else to see in our do here? Before we go do the do? Whole lot of no one's home here. Uh-huh. I like the diagonal movement for, uh, you know, a Zelda-esque kind of thing. Let's go to do. I assume that her being there was like, hey, here's the edge of town and you're going to see enemies soon, but there we go. Music change. Now it's serious. This background be moving. And now it's not. That's weird. The trees and the grass were scared of those slimes. Just to make sure here, we don't have anything resembling a map. Right? Okay. Can we farm XP? Nope, these enemies are still gone. Oh, huh? Oh, those ones came back, huh? Anything? Any, any, okay, 150 to level up. Got it. Now they're gone. All right, sword's a little faster. I guess I should walk all the way back to my home and restore my HP, right? Oh, fuck. Willow got smoked. Okay, we're still level two. And I guess we're, we're, oh wait, do I have to equip stuff? What? This, that's, now, that's just silly. Starting me with nothing equipped, come on. Ah, oh, getting sloppy now. Oh, 
shit. Okay. guy's a dick. All for nothing. Interesting, uh, you know, it, I hope you get something good for killing that guy, like a, like, hey, he dropped a better sword, or, you know, if, if that's like a cool quest-like thing of hunt this guy and you get some stuff. But the moving grass and trees when there are enemies, it's, it's a weird, it's weird. Oh, I guess that satisfies my curiosity that, you know, hey, this is the right way to go, because there's not a lot of... At first, I was like, are the skulls too intense for me right now, and I need to... Interesting that, like, well, I don't know. Not, maybe not that interesting, but when you when you level up, you do not get all your HP back. So even though I seem to have a new maximum... Right? Yeah, uh... No XP for killing the small ones. That's annoying. I hope we're almost there. Wherever there is. Because I only got 14 hit points left. Okay, this is looking promising. But I can still swing my sword. Demon Bogarda takes all the Are you telling me that the demon Bogarda is bogarding all of the fruit? All of the fruit grow in our village and our gold and silver too. We gotta, we gotta find a way to recover hit points. Uh-huh. Okay, there's a cave. Sometimes you can hear a weird voice from inside. It's good to know. Uh-huh. 
Bogarda is the father of the chief of this village. And he was changed into a demon by the wicked magic of Bavmorda. Looks like you can use this shield. Well, now we're, now we're cooking. We got a shield, we got a sword, we got magic acorns. Got an empty house with no one in it. I just, is anyone here gonna heal me? How do I get to these homes down here? Can I go? Surely, someone here. Old man. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yes, make the screen blink. Now I guess we'll go west to the, the cave? He said I should hear the story from the village chief, but I don't know... We, don't, we wanted to go west to the cave, probably, so... This, we've been in here, right? Okay. Heal mace. Oh, I'll clutch the heal mace tightly. This is a lot of magics on this screen, if this screen fills up. Alright, we'll keep it on Acorn for now. This is a nice little track. of the village. Okay, so we do we maybe not want to go to the cave just yet? Well, this is not... Let's go north. Can't do anything? I wonder if I'm taking less damage or if it's really just for projectiles. Hmm. this. What the fuck? It's bad out here. It's bad out here. This fucking guy.
Oh. Put chests here. Just put something here. Look at that. That's fucked up. That's right. Well, we only had 24 hit points, but, uh... Oh, God. That shield did not do what you thought it might do. I should have healed. Yeah, I, they gave me a whole mace for it. Is this the... Oh! A am I? What do I turn to what uh oh okay I got really excited there for a minute Let me reequip everything I didn't want to go north from here because that it didn't go anywhere, right? Is Bogarda the weird... Is that the lizard man I was fighting? I assume so. How are we doing on XP? 300. We need 710 for our next level. I'll go kill slimes for another hour, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, let's, let's go try and find the lizard man one more time and... harder to fit through that gap in his projectiles than it seems like it should be. thought maybe something would happen there. Is was that the guy? Was that is that Is that Baltimora? It's not like fun video gaming. Like, just don't put a path here. Just don't put a path here. But some of those, but there's so many dead ends.
Is this another one of these fucking guys? Do I have to find another one of these motherfuckers? Thank you, Heal Mace. Mace just rolls out in the silver suit and goes, uh-huh, uh-huh, and then you get all your HP back. It's a golden image of a human face. You have the light of life. Maybe there's like a, you know, maybe do I eventually learn, get the ability to cut grass and then these are, these are pathways. Is that a, maybe that's a thing. That would be reasonable, I suppose. This game's all right. Like it's finicky in, in a few ways. Um... Should I kill this guy just for the XP? I mean, I don't feel like I... Probably not worth it. I was hoping I would get more from that fight, but oh well. Fuck. I was going to head back to town with my statue and see what they had to say about it, but... So I guess I did that and now I can go in. That's a weird It's a weird line of dialogue for Oh, you have the statue. Go on in. This music got silly. for another hit of the heel mace. Smoking on that heel mace pack, as they say. I 
That's fucked up. So close to the XP. So close to level four. Where does this put us? Nope. Okay. Oh, and we lost a bunch of XP along the way, too. Um, cool. This is neat. This is... Uh, I was not expecting much out of this, to be honest. Uh, going into it. There's a Willow Arcade game that I, some people really like. I, I, I never got into. And just I just so... And not really having a ton of familiarity with Willow. I guess I just always... You know, it was just this feeling of just like, man, Willow is dumb. <laughs> this is not going to lead to me going and seeing the movie or anything. Or more than I've seen over the years of flipping through channels and having, you know, Willow be on or, or whatever. But, um, but Willow's kind of cool. Uh, but what, what does kind of cool net us on the list here? It's certainly a better game than Little Nemo the Dream Master. As kind of a comparison point, I suppose. Um, it's better than 3D World Runner. It's over Rescue the Embassy Mission for sure. But this is, uh, we're getting into... We're getting into uh, some pretty thin air up here. And so, and, and thusly, we will see it make its appearance. Right here at number 24. Better than Muscle Tag Team Match. Better than Low G Man, the Low Gravity Man. But it's no Gradius. Congratulations to Willow. Blaine brings us the next game. This game is... I suppose I would call it legendary in some circles as, uh, as someone who never really played a lot of games with people. I don't really have that. Uh, that feel for it. Um, I, I believe I have played this game a little bit, but I'm not. I don't remember it innately or anything like that. It is a game called Super Spike V-Ball from your friends at Technos. So, you know, Technos did some quality work in this era, of course, with the River City Ransoms of the world and some less quality work with the Double Dragon games. I do like that this track feels like it fell out of a Double Dragon game or River City Ransom. The ball. Time for a little Super Spike of the ball. Boom. You know, I'm all about, I ball out all the time. I'm always balling out. All right, let's try it. Oh boy, George and Murphy, we're the kind team with the perfect combination of power technique. Punish you turkeys with our spikes. Oh. Bimmy and Jimmy are here. Oh, 
I, I don't want to play the defensive team. As much as I love Billy and Jimmy. State select. To what end? North Dakota. Configuration. Stage. Yeah, Daytona, of course. Good. Good. That's right. I was wondering, can I... Can I, can I do a jumping serve. Ball out! Well, how was I supposed to... The spikes come in hot. They are indeed super spikes. out. It's out, son. Let's ball out. There we go. Get bent. Cool. Now oh, see, he's... Okay. 
Finding this kind of dull. But it's okay. I, I don't know. It, it's I'm, I'm sure it's a four-player game. Ugh. Faked you out there. Powering up your spikes. I don't... That doesn't... I don't... It's not immediately clear how to do that. Great. Well... It's going great over here. <laughs> I'm not sure when you would mash, because as soon as you tap the spike button, he goes through the animation. And that, like, prevents you from... from tapping anything. Okay, so I, I mash the jump button. Okay. Yeah. Right, I'll try it. North Dakota, fool. Do these dragon punches, let you know. See, we have ads for good food. I got distracted by them and couldn't serve. Uh... I see. The, the which player am I controlling thing is a little weird. Fooled ya. I agree with the lady. It's time to ball out. Thank <laughs> you. 
Fuck that up. This is okay. I don't know. Like, now that I'm kind of getting the hang of it a little bit, like, it's... I don't know. I, I wish it had a little more character. I don't much care for the look of the guys. Take that home with you. Back to get some good food. New York. Whap. Okay. I guess I didn't need to hit that, huh? Weird that I was able to, considering where it was going to land, but whatever. Ugh. The music is really good, because, yeah, it has that Technos vibe. It has that River City Ransom double dragon kind of thing to it. Uh, the music's probably my favorite part of the whole thing. Chicago, what do we got? Football, pizza, you've nailed it. They, they, this is everything. Ray, Chicago, pizza, an alien, a furry, a sign for a furry. Like, this is everything that uh, Chicago is. I kaboomed him, but he... What the fuck happened there? I, I screwed that all up. I screwed that all up. Thank you. 
Okay. I feel like I was getting those uh, super spikes there for a while, and I'm, I'm just, it's not happening as readily for some reason. There we go. Oh, it's trying to jump up there. Ain't touching that one. Gonna Samoa Joe walk out of the way of that one. Oh, I should have ran up and played net there or whatever. Ball out? I'm just about done with this. Oh, gosh. Got up there faster than I did. Okay. Let's see the other thing I wanted to see here. look much like Billy and Jimmy that I picked. Uh, Uh, super Spike of a Ball. Not a bad game. Like, kind of cool. Uh, simplistic, but I feel like a lot of volleyball games were, you know? Um... It's, you know, it's, it's, it's fine. It's probably a pretty good four player game, you know? Um, but scientifically speaking, if we're thinking about where this is going to end up, I mean, I think we're really talking about this kind of like 
middle of the list kind of spot. I would take it uh, over a Tiny Toon Adventures and a Pirates. I'd take it over a Dusty Diamonds. If we let the science guide us, then I think what you'll find is that we are coming in right here at number 45. Super Spike Ball! Thanks to Blaine for suggesting that one. Um... Okay, uh, next game up is suggested by Faith. And I, I think I've played, I, it's a great name. It's a great name. In the vast universe far away, there's a peaceful nation consisting of seven planets orbiting around an artificial sun. Okay. Their peace, however, is about to be shattered. The record scratch, and then Dennis the Menace is here. Uh, animals, plants, and products from the factories begin to attack the people. Good God. The, the nation becomes lost in chaos without knowing the reason why. This is what's happening in the United States of America right now. Conference of Representatives from the Seven Planets requests the Space Police to resolve the matter. A capable commander with the code name of Gunnack is summoned. It really rolls off the done. Gunnack. His mission is to investigate the eight areas and restore peace to the nation. The nation or the galaxy? What do we, what do we... Rumor has it, there's a powerful invader in one of the eight areas who's generating all the threats. I don't know that I've ever seen this before. Now that I'm like, look, now that I'm reading that story and, and like, wait, what? But Gunnack is a... Oh, Fig dot sis. It's very silly. No ricochet of bullets. Ricochet of bullets. Speed has priority. Sprite has priority. What? So this is so this allows slowdown but less flicker. Is that what we're seeing here? If you collect several bombs at the same time, the effect of each bomb is enhanced, but you can't carry more than twenty bombs. So this is very Xanak-like, huh? I don't know that I realized that. Yeah, this is just... This is... Just, this is... Did they make a fucking sequel to Xanak and I just never fucking knew it? So I guess the letters are probably the the numbers determine our main shot and the letters determine bomb style I suppose. But 
that's, you know, that is the Xanak noise there. At a different pitch, but... That's something I should be collecting? Let's find out. It is. Okay. Yeah, speed has priority. Let that shit flicker. Uh, this feels good and, and, you know, so far, at least, has not been crazy difficult. Which is always nice. Oh, we're leveling up these damn weapons. Look at how crazy that... like a good weapon to have here. I thought I was on intermediate. Or is it just going to ring up the... Hmm. We have $36. Do we want turbo power, weapons, or drop bomb? Uh, yes. Yes? I don't... I don't... <laughs> the bomb has not been dropped here. Drop bomb on which area? I... Let's just blow up level three. Oh. One number of type F has been dropped here. What? So in area three now... We'll find an F that wasn't there before? Is that what we just did? Did we place power-ups into the level? But this is area two, so we bought...
pretty effective weapons. I'm not dropping enough bombs to really know what the F and the W and the T and all that stuff are. Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess you only can have 20 bombs, so maybe I should, uh... I like this weapon, but I don't like it enough to keep it. It, it doesn't seem as effective. Oh, did I get hit a bunch and lower my level? Is that why these shots are not as cool? Something happened there? Oh, I lost my wing. Yeah, right. Well, these weapons are way less cool. I like two because it reminds me of the, the default uh, sub-weapon in Xanak, but... It doesn't seem like a great... I mean, I guess the slow movement of it, it does good damage when it hits here. Seems like it is, anyway. We need some pea chips. We gotta, we gotta level up this. We gotta get these weapons leveled up. This is, uh... But you did Uh, this is, uh... I, I like this game. I, it feels very manageable. Uh, more so than Xanak, I would say. Which, uh, you know, when it ramps, it ramps. Which I suppose, I, you know, I'm, I'm guessing this game would as well eventually get to a point where it's like, hey, by the way, it's, it's hard now. Uh, but I'm having a pretty good time with this. But the weapons feel nice. I don't know. Like, it, it's a... Uh it, it feels like a good batch of, you know, the, like the five kind of default weapons... Um They all feel like they serve a purpose. Okay, so T does a little ricochet little number. Oh. Like in Xanak, I'd say that there were just there were sub weapons that I did not like using. Here it feels like all this stuff has uh, you know, a, a purpose. They're throwing the pipe bombs from the Contra snow level out of the trees at us. This fucking guy. Oh, look at me! Look at me! Ha! 
Ah, you blew me up. I love it. Say hi to my friend Gold Rock. There is something for you. The content is F. One pieces. Please take them. I don't know what turbo is. I don't know what turbo power is. I don't really have a good indication of what that is. The turbo power rank cannot be increased anymore. Evil space umbrellas. You know, really good music, fun enemy variety so far. I, yeah, Gunnack. Who knew? I mean, apparently a lot of people knew. Yeah, some level three bombs. That's cool that the bombs can level up. Evil fish. It's like a 1942 level here, but without the great music of 1942. Yeah, I've got some little Xevious uh, homage here, but you can actually blow these ones up. Yeah, this is this is uh This is fantastic. Compile, turns out. Knew what they were doing. Sh sure. No uh no level 5 bombs, huh? Blew that lady up. I guess no point in getting more Fs. Well, I guess it gives me more bombs, right? Is it? Yeah, without that wing, it's uh, tricky, huh? fish the business. It is very funny. I don't, you know, who knows if this was intentional or not, but it is very funny that we do have kind of a an homage to 1942 here that is, or I guess 1943 because we're so close to the ships. But I would rather play this 
than either of those gifts. Rain and W's. Oh. All right. Oh man. That's okay. We can't play Gun Knack all day. The little ricocheting T bombs are kind of cool too. Evil octopus. that up, huh? Really neat game. This, I, you know, I. We'll just uh, let's get a taste of this next stage, then we'll probably uh, we'll probably move on here. Evil logs flying at me. Space forest. Ah. Ugh. This level had like nine of those wings at the start of it, and now here we are. Should have stuck with the five there. Evil paper. Death to all wood. Ah, whoa, whoa, whoa. I like that this one stays on even when you're not holding down the button. Thank you. 
No. finish this stage and then uh and i'll probably lose all my lives so i can i guess submit this score to the leaderboards or whatever but uh uh but this is great this is a great game I don't even know what that number down there is keeping track of. It's like, it looks sort of similar to my score, but then it's got weird digits in weird places. This is ridiculous. The music's ridiculous. All right. Evil banks shooting coins at us. Sure. A big safe. I And it's playful, too. Not in full-on, like, shoot em up you know, Parodius. Or, you know, it's not sexy Parodius levels of bonkers. Uh, but this is cool. Now let's blow up, or at least try to blow up. I guess I, I guess it's hard to blow up when. Also, it seems reasonable from a difficulty perspective, which is always fun. Um. music. I like that. Oh, the stars change direction when you... Um... What a cool game! Wow! Gunnack! Who would have known? I wouldn't have. But man, Gunnack is fantastic! Where does Gunnack go on our list? That's a great question. They took Knack and gave him guns. I think this is better than Xanak. I'd take it over Gradius for sure. It's above Trojan. I'd take it over a balloon fight. Oh, man. It's above Tecmo World Wrestling. Is Gunnack better than Commando? Man. Man. Yes, it is. Is it better than Kung Fu? Yes, it is. Is it better than Kickle Q Bickle? A, a, a fantastic puzzle game. Yes, it is. Would we take Gun Knack over a Tecmo Bowl? We sure would. Is Gun Knack better than RC Pro Am? 
I'll tell you up front here, it's not better than Jackal. Man, man. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. But well, congratulations to Gunnack, our new number 11. What a cool fucking thing. That's, it's always, it's fun to, yeah, like, like that and uh, Lil Sampson, you know, discovering these games that I just, I had no idea. Had no idea. Um, All right, what, how much time we got left here? We may have a time for one more. Let's go with this one. And if this one does not take long, then we will try to fit another one in. This is a game from your friends at Hudson. And it's called Hudson's Adventure Island. Weird lineage here with Wonder Boy and all the other, you know, I guess it's a... Master Higgins, we love Master Higgins. Uh, let's start playing it. Let's not watch the demo. Let's get into it here. 16 shot. This motherfucker can hit a, a button. Out of the egg, we get this. And now we can kill this. Very ice. Very, uh, inertia. Very slippery. Uh, you have to continually eat the fruit because your health drops even if you don't get hit? Or is that just a... Or is that just a Wonder Boy thing? Oh, yeah. It, it looks like it will drop on its own. Let's get this skateboard. was a game I felt inspired to play a lot of uh, when it came out because, it, you know, it's a platformer and, and, I don't know, there's just a certain kinship with, you know, the, the Marios of the world and stuff that, you know, in between Mario games you're looking for something. Anything. Ah, oh, fuck you. So now we don't even have the ability to attack. But we, we'll get this and it'll be fine. I... Hey, fuck you. Fuck this. No. That, mm. Um, so yeah, so I, I played quite a bit of this game, um, back then, but I, I guess I mostly played it as Wonder Boy on the Master System, now that I think about it, like, that was, you know, 
know, I maybe rented this game a few times or something and was really confused at like, wait, why is this the same game, but why am I a dude in a hat? What's... <coughs> and, you know, skateboards are very cool, and the idea that you could get on a skateboard was, uh, was pretty great. Dangerous place for a skateboard. Uh, I think this game looks bad. Like the, the Master Higgins looks like the. Ah, we got a pop bonus. Um, skate is life. Great. Oh God. Pig coming at us. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, no. Ugh. I I hate the way this game feels. I I. I think that the look of it is pretty crummy. Like, there's some fun little enemies here like these guys, but I think the main character sprite sucks. I think in terms of player options and stuff, like, it's, it is that kind of Mario style, like, the attack button also runs. Um, but the way, the, the movement is so bad. And the idea that you have to, like, your health drains, and so you have to kind of continually be collecting fruit, I think sucks. Um, but this game was like, I, I feel like these games were often revered. And I know that the later games are better than this one, but, um, but fuck, man, this game sucks. <laughs> I, I hate this game. Like, it's not, you know, it, it's not the worst thing in the world. Um... But just in terms of feel and and, and and all of that, for a game that, that was, like I said, thought of a certain type of way back then, um, I, I, th I think this game does not deserve the nostalgia that it gets, I suppose. Now we're on actual ice, so what, you know. Is that an umbrella? Is that going to, like, protect me from the spikes or something? Evil eggplant. Good. Yeah, the eggplant drained all my health and it seemed like 
seemed like once it did that, my max life went down as well, and so basically, uh, basically fucked. It's fun. We gotta get that pot bonus. Perhaps there's a continue uh, code in there somewhere. Perhaps there's some way to continue. This seems like the sort of game that would offer that, but uh... Oh, you need to find the Hudson B to continue? Yeah, fuck that. Fuck this. Fuck this game. Fuck this goddamn game. Fuck this game. Fuck this game. It's not a, it's, it, it's, uh, everything about it feels bad. Everything about Adventure Island feels bad. It doesn't look especially great, but it's, it's, that's a, a very notable game. I feel like of that era, that game, that franchise, weirdly notable, but you know, it, it's functional. Um, it's not broken. It doesn't feel glitchy. It feels more like, oh, hey, yeah, um, we made all these choices. Enjoy. And, um, and here we are. That's why I don't think it's necessarily in this, like, bottom tier of trash, right? Um, but it's not much higher than that. I mean, it's certainly better than caveman games. Uh, you know, you take it over a... I suppose you take it over a pinball quest. As much as it hurts for me to say it. Um, you know, it, it, Adventure Island is better than the Three Stooges. It's better than RoboCop. Is it better than that shit-ass port of bad dudes? Yes, it is. Again, it's just kind of a crappy thing. <laughs> Is it better than 1942? You know, the music really drags 1942 down. Um, Is Adventure Island better than 1942? Jesus Christ, that's a weirdly... It is. It is. Adventure Island goes above 1942. But Yo-Noid. Is Adventure Island better than Yo-Noid? These are both, man, these are rough ones. This is a rough one. But there you have it. It's our new number 92. Welcome to the top 100, Hudson's Adventure Island. It's better than Yo Noid, but I suppose it's no trog. Big Bang Blitz says Yo Noid is practically the same game, but way, way better. I, mm, I, I was about to say the opposite <laughs> of that. Uh, and uh, Renegade just barely holding on in the top 100 here. We'll see if it's, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens next to, to that one. Um, that's going to do it. We had some, some longer, uh, we had, we had some longer games here with Willow. I did not expect Willow to go as long as it did, but, um, because I, I was thinking more of the arcade game and how it was a little more actiony and not, not quite as action adventure -y, I suppose. Um, and so... That means next time around, we will get to Puznik, which Daniel suggested. And a little game called Rambo, which I suggested. Rambo is... a really... 
interesting game for when it came out, for the games surrounding it. Like, it is so much more complicated than a lot of those other games. It's... It's interesting. Um... I feel like with some better tuning and some better options and, and some of that stuff, I think Rambo could have actually been a really kind of great adventure game, but, um, well, whatever. Anyway, I, uh, I, I've, I've played over the last probably five years. I did actually play through Rambo start to finish once uh, I was cheating, um, on the mister, but I still, but I did play through the entirety of the game. Um, and it's uh very interesting very interesting but um but we'll get to that next time congratulations to all our entrants congratulations to circus caper the worst game on the platform at number 115 will it stay there i don't know there's still a lot of unlicensed stuff to get to that i expect will will eventually bump that game off the bottom of the list and, uh, I, you know, there's still some pretty, there's some pretty big bangers here, uh, at the top, but you know, there's still more of those to come too. So, um, I, we're getting to a point now where I probably need to build a list of games, um, that are left that are remaining so that I can pick from those. Uh, of course I, I posted a new post on Patreon. So if you are a part of the advisory panel, uh, you'll find that at the top. Now that's a, a new, a new post for comments there. Uh, if you want to suggest games for next time around and next, next time around and all of that, that's the place to do it. Um, and we will, we will keep on trucking with this man, man, galaxy 5,000. This was a great week for. Games I had never really seen or given the time of day between Gun Knack and Galaxy 5000 and Willow. It was a, uh, an interesting, an interesting batch of, uh, batch of games for sure. Um, head on over to patreon.com slash Jeff Gersman. If you want to sign up and, uh, get access to suggest some games or just get access to ad free podcasts or get access to the discord or get access to, uh, fucking hanging out and, uh, and, and keeping, keeping this hellish nightmare moving forward. I thank you for everyone, uh, supporting this endeavor. It's been a lot of fun to be able to do this with you, uh, up on YouTube. Uh, there's the, um, I took a look at the Atari 2600 plus, which is out today. It's their kind of new new Atari 2600 hardware thing. Uh, I guess there's an emulator in there, but it, it takes real cartridges and, and they made, they made new controllers. They made new old controllers, which is actually kind of awesome because those were kind of getting hard to find in, in decent quantities. So, uh, so if you like watching old games be played go watch some even older games be played on that 2600 video. Anyway, uh, I will see you next week for the podcast. And uh, take care of yourselves and all of that. I'll see you soon.